Welcome, Fly Tribe, and welcome to the Painful Truth Podcast, where we will dive deep into uncomfortable topics that will help us grow as an aerial athlete. Are you ready? Let's go. My gym is still closed and I still have to train at home. Welcome to the Painful Truth Podcast where we dive deep into uncomfortable topics and conversations in order to grow as a human and aerial athlete. Don't forget to like and subscribe, ring the notification bell so that you're the first to know when I drop the newest episode. You have a chance to win a program each and every month just by sending a review and we can't thank you enough. My gym is still closed and I still have to train at home. This is literally something I heard just this week from a guest who came from Massachusetts and she told me all of the gyms in her town and around her were still closed. This is December 9th, 2021 and I, I am baffled by that. If we were still closed at my studio, that would have been the death of flying fitness. I can't believe how many people are still training at home. Where I have mixed feelings about training aerial at home, unless you're an advanced aerialist. And it's amazing how many studios and gyms are still closed from the original lockdowns in 2020. I want to know, in the comments, let me know, are you guys locked down where you're at? And tell me in the comments where you're from. Um, I would love to know. I'd love to see a consensus of who's all still closed. And I know around the world, there's a lot of people locked down and closed. Here in Northwest Texas, we are not closed. We we only had to close our studio for two months and we've been open ever since. We have not had a problem with people being sick or getting sick. Uh, everybody's been staying healthy. And so far, everybody, everything is great. I want to know from you guys in the comment, are you locked down still? And where are you from? If you're not locked down, let me know that as well. A lot of people messaged me and even my local students asked how they can train and keep their aerial skills up while being stuck at home. And I know that's still an issue. However, there's a lot of information being pumped out online, free information, paid information. But anyone who knows me knows that I used to boycott the online learning um, of, of aerial arts specifically. And I go in depth with that in my last episode of the aerial pandemic. And I'll link that here so that you can go back and watch that as well. But but it is where our times have gone. And instead of resisting it like I used to and falling behind, I've embraced it and it, I've made it my own. It's why, I, my, it's why I have designed my training method to be a safe and practical method. This is so that anyone that literally cannot even bring their leg up at home can learn aerial safe. Now, you should always have someone present with you while you train. This should be just part of your understanding as an aerialist. It's what sets a great aerialist from a good aerialist. And I know it's a pain in the butt, but quite frankly, it was just something I was always used to, and you should be used to it as well. So know that it's just part of that self-responsibility. And in my opinion, aerial is often underestimated it's rarely looked at as for what it is, which is a daredevil stunt. Even when I worked as a professional in the circus, they underplayed aerialist all the time. They would just train, they would train um, dancers who had no prior aerial experience to do aerial acts, and they still do this to this day. And then they would wonder why there were so many injuries and I can't tell you how many times I see people hanging out of their shoulder blades. And I see this from people on a daily, on Instagram, in, on TikTok, you name it, I see it. And you're gonna have problems in the future if you continue to train with your shoulders out of your sockets. 
since more and more people are learning through online courses, it's, an, it's really important to know what is needed for an at-home aerial workout. And right away, you know that either you have height access or you don't have ac ac access to height. And either that's gonna be in the form of an outdoor rig, like an A-frame, or it's gonna be like in a vaulted ceiling at home or an apartment or something, right? Or maybe you're probably not gonna have access to a, a rig or vaulted ceilings or height access, right? So just know that if you do, you can work more skills in choreography. And remember, you need to have someone with you all the time to practice. But if you only have access to a short apparatus or no apparatus at all, you may be grounded for your workouts. And that's totally okay. Ground workouts are just as important as workouts in the air. And if you follow my method of training, then you already know about the nine step build a workout method. And this teaches you how to build your workout in, with cross training in mind. And this way you're not just working in the air. This way you're actually working on the ground and working in the air and there's a balance with your training and your, your practicing. And you can work the same muscles the same way you would in the air but on the ground. This will help you stay aerial fit for when you do get to get into the air again. But if you have an outdoor rig or high ceilings in your home, to where you can get maybe an engineer and a contractor to like put the rigging up for you, uh, you're, you're super lucky and you really need to realize that you are far and few in, in between here, okay? There's not a lot of people who are lucky enough to have an outdoor rig, an A-frame, or even vaulted ceilings. Most people do not have these means or the space to even have the aerial rig. And definitely, like I said, most people don't have vaulted ceilings. And, and then just to mention the cost of an engineer or a contractor if you're trying to be legit and do it right. So give me a thumbs up if you are lucky enough to have a rig and a vaulted ceiling, or a vaulted ceiling, I should say. Give me a thumbs down if you're not so lucky and you're grounded. Wah, wah. <laughs> Sorry guys, I know. Remember there are so many things that we can do without an aerial apparatus in order to keep us in shape. There are so many things. And like I said, if you follow my nine step build a workout uh, method, you're gonna know this. But after all, if you're cross training, like I said, you're gonna already realize this, right? You can focus more on like building muscle strength. Maybe even the hypertrophy, like building of the muscle and shredding fat. Maybe you need to lean down for that when you come up into the air, when you have access to the air, you are ready to go. So I created this program called the Aerialist Ultimate Shred that needed limited equipment so that it can be done at home. Uh, I had some feedback about it and on it people were saying they were like super happy that it only had three primary pieces of equipment. And the whole reason why I designed the program was because after I got carjacked, I gained 30 pounds and I was kind of stuck at home. And then, you know, I was starting to feel better and then the pandemic hit, right? And everybody was stuck at home. So I knew there had to be other people like me. Maybe they weren't carjacked and gained 30 pounds, but for whatever reason, and now we know that people put on weight from, from being stuck at home from the COVID. But for whatever reason, I created this, it's a fat loss shred program for aerialists. It's with the aerialists in mind so that it keeps our pulling muscles and our core super you know, ready for the air. But I had a lot of feedback and people were telling me they were, they were really happy that it only had basically three main pieces of equipment. Most people already have most of the equipment at home. And if you don't have these pieces of equipment, you should definitely invest in just the basic home equipment. Like, and I'm going to go through the set of equipment here in a little bit, but you, if you don't have any equipment at home, this is something that as an athlete, you should just have. So in order to be successful at home, 
and to to be successful at you know with the programs that are coming out at home you need a range of equipment and this is even if you have an aerial rig or a vaulted ceiling or whatever you have to have an aerial apparatus you're still going to need these other pieces of equipment so that you can cross train at home this is where people get confused you have to have and, and I'm just going to kind of go into it right here. So one of the pieces of equipment that you should have is a range of dumbbells, a, a range of weight in dumbbells. And this is because, you know, a lot of people do have like the smaller dumbbells, like two pounds, three pounds, maybe even a five pound or a 10 pound. Those are really common. But if you're really serious about being an athlete, then you're gonna have to have a range of weight. And that's because in order to go to hypertrophy, in order to go to fat loss, in order to lean down, in order to get accomplish some of these goals that we should have and probably do have as an aerial athlete, you're gonna need to overload your weight. So, and this is where a lot of people do get confused. Now you can, um, you know, slim down and kind of tone up you know, a little bit with the, the, the smaller weights. But if you're wanting serious results, like insane results, that's going to have you chiseled and looking like a badass, then you're going to want a range of weights because no, there's no other way to build muscle and to, um, to chisel out unless you overload and create a stimulus in your muscle fiber. So, you have to have a range of weight so that you can constantly be increasing your overload, right? And before I forget guys, make sure you leave us a review, tag us on Instagram, and you can um, have a chance to win this program here actually, the Aerialist Ultimate Shred, or one of our other programs. Make sure to screenshot your tag in your review and um, DM me so that I for sure get it. I get so many um, tags and everything that aren't related to this that um, if you kind of screenshot it and DM us, then we can kind of cycle through that better. And um, I would love to give you guys a program. So definitely show us some love, review us, and that helps us continue to pull out this information for you guys. All right, Fly Tribe, social media is flooded with people having their own experience with fitness and health, and then they sell their experience. There's an actual science to fitness and health. It's not just an experience. And this is where I think people also tend to fail at in when they try to do, you know, different programs or even like these free content programs or whatever they do on, on online, they fail. And it's because they're going based off of one person's experience. Most of these influencers have zero, zero education in fitness and health. And many of these influencers who are what we call gym jocks, all swear that, that you can't shred and lean up or even build muscle at home. It's just simply because you aren't lifting the big weights or using a Smith machine or other weight machines. You already know as an aerialist, we know that's BS. Do these gym jocks not understand calisthenics? <laughs> we do, don't we? And as aerialists, we are usually pretty disciplined people, I'd say. It's what training does to a person. It creates discipline. The first time I did the aerialist ultimate shred, I had to do it and stick to the plan so that I could stand by my promise of being able to lose at least a third of your body fat. And quite frankly, for most of my life, I only used at home equipment and was always known for my muscly arms. I rarely would go to the actual gym and use machines, but if you want to make significant difference at home, you do need to invest in a few specifics. And like I stated earlier, a range of weight in dumbbells is going to be one of the key pieces of your equipment. The second piece of equipment is a range of weighted resistance bands. So this is going to be another one of those that 
you're gonna want to be able to overload your weight with. And you can do this with resistance bands. They do come out with different weighted resistance bands. The other piece of equipment that you should have as an aerialist athlete at home is a door pull-up bar. Every great aerialist has a pull-up bar in their home. All right, so I understand if you're someone who travels around a lot or you have work outside of town or maybe you're a performing aerialist and you travel and tour, I get it. You, you, you maybe don't have access to that. But if you're at home, if you have access, that this is one of the key, this is one of, this is the third piece of equipment that you should have at home. All right. The other equipment that you should have at home, which you probably already do, is a yoga mat, ankle and wrist weights, a foam roller, and a bench would be nice, but you can always use a chair while you're doing your dumbbell exercises. You can also get a barbell, okay? But you do, that, that is absolutely not necessary for this Aerialist Ultimate Shred program. And you can chisel your body and lose a ton of fat with this one program. This is all you need. I'm giving you the exact ingredients you need right here to chisel your body and lose fat. So I'm gonna go through that again. A range of weighted dumbbells, a range of weighted resistance bands, a pull-up bar, a yoga mat, ankle and wrist weights, a foam roller, and a bench, but you can use a chair or something similar to a bench. All right, so this is the cheapest way to build an at-home aerial gym. And this is without buying your own weighted machines and benches and Smith machines and things like that. So this really is the cheapest way that you can build an aerial gym without having a, an aerial rig, without having uh, vaulted ceilings. You can use these pieces of equipment and work the same muscles. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in the Aerialist Ultimate Shred. But I feel like an at-home program like the Aerialist Ultimate Shred can be completely misleading sometimes. Now, you can always upgrade later on to getting a Smith machine and a bench and like, you know, a total row of dumbbells or whatever it is, you know, a, um, a fly machine. But like I said, if you have the right program, if you have these simple six pieces of equipment that I mentioned above, and I'll put, the, put them in the description also so that you can kind of refer back to them. That's all you're gonna need to lose at least a third of your body fat and completely look ripped. What I can do is promise that this home program, you will have to work insanely hard and you will sculpt an aerialist athlete's body. But in order to do that, you have to work insanely hard. You will get jacked and ripped, but you will have to work the program. Do you think that you can get insane results with a five pound dumbbell or even just one resistance band? Fly Tribe, I'm telling you no. And the reason why I say no is you need stimulus. I mentioned this earlier on. You need to break through the muscle tissue fiber in order for it to grow. And the more muscle you have, the more fat you can lose, the more lean you become. Load is king to building muscle. And if you want to build muscle at home, you need a range of weights. I can't, I can't express that enough. So that we can continue to overload, okay, each set. But knowing what your goal is, is the most important thing. If your goal is truly to gain muscle and change your physique and 
you know, uh, lean down, you need to get honest on what is needed to obtain those goals. And know that you don't need a bunch of fancy equipment. You don't. You don't need all this high tech, crazy, big equipment in order to build muscle and lean out and shred fat at home. But you are 100% for sure, you need, you need a range of dumbbells, you need a range of resistance bands, okay? So you need weight. And so that's gonna look like, like talking about dumbbells, a 10 pound, 20 pound, 30 pound, 40 pound, 50 pound, as much as you can buy. When I was a professional cir circus performer, there were times I lived in hotels and casinos and we had full access to the gyms. I would go into the gyms and I would sometimes only be, there would only be like one rack of dumbbells and a treadmill. I would look around and be like, uh, where's everything else, right? I had to get creative with my workouts. And even when I was working at Ringling Brothers and s some other shows, they would actually carry their own like gym with them. And, and you know, those guys, they would unload it every time, every, you know, new town or city we would be in and they would load it back every time we would load out. It was amazing, but it was very limited equipment and we all had to get very creative. And you're talking about people who are like ripped and we all know circus people are ripped and there's no reason why you can't be. But it was actually during that time when I realized that you don't need fancy equipment to have a badass physique, right? And you you would think back in the day to like Arnold Schwarzenegger, they didn't have fancy equipment either. They just had iron. They just had a lot of weight. What, what will really set you apart from being a good aerialist? What will really set you apart from being not just a good aerialist, but a great aerialist? And not just a great aerialist, but an aerial athlete. It's honestly, it's pushing through the obstacles. It's pushing through those obstacles that present themselves. You know, we get reliant on fancy equipment and even having our aerial apparatuses. I know I was. And like I said, I had to adapt pretty quick because when I was on tour and touring around and traveling around, there was often times when it just depends on who I was working for. You know, we didn't have certain equipment and, and sometimes we didn't have our aerial equipment even um, ready for us to use, to train on and to work out on. So we had to get creative. We've been reliant on fancy gym equipment or even having our aerial apparatuses, like I said earlier, to, to ourselves even. And when we don't have them, we get lost. We get lost and we're like, what do we do? But this is what makes an expert an expert. This is what makes you master your craft, having to maneuver through these obstacles and figure out the problem. When you have to figure out the problem, you succeed over the obstacle. When you have to figure out how to get a result, despite having limited information or equipment, you gotta figure it out, right? All you need is sometimes just a bigger set of dumbbells to get off that plateau. So before I go further into the home workout, you first need a gym program that works. You need a five day split workout program, preferably. And if it's a, at home where you can just roll out of bed, you have literally no excuse, my friend. No excuses. And none of this, oh, I, I don't have time, or oh, I can't, I, I have to wear a mask, or oh, I, my gym is closed. No, 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 no more excuses. Literally, you, you can roll out of bed in your pajamas and get your workout in. And you guys know I'm all about cross training. And when we cross train, we find true alignment and harmony with our fit lifestyle. Most people think they need to work every muscle group every day to work out. This is often when you feel 
overworked, too sore, way too tight, and you begin to just feel worse and never see any results. And you're just creating more and more inflammation in your entire body, never giving any parts of your body a break. If you balance your workout, your body will love you and it, it literally will begin to respond in a positive way for you. Before you know it, you're gonna see results. And what's amazing is you actually begin to see results when you actually begin to do less. And I know organizing your workout and your training method, your training program or plan can get really overwhelming, especially for those that don't understand, you know, physiology. And that's okay. Most people did not go to school for that. And, and that is all right. Let the people who did go to school for it do the work for you. And it's just like the Aerialist Ultimate Shred. It's based on four weeks, but I suggest doing it at least two months. Some people's bodies simply don't respond until about three to four weeks into it. So if you kept shredding for another four weeks, you would see massive results, like more rounded shoulders, cut arms to where people are definitely going to be commenting, a flatter stomach, more chiseled muscles everywhere. Uh, the five day split would look a little like, you know, Monday would be like a chest and triceps, Tuesdays would be a quad focused, Wednesdays would be like a back, um, Thursdays would be shoulder biceps, Fridays glutes and hamstrings. And this is kind of like a five day split of this program and of, um, you know, this would help decrease the inflammation of your body it would help lean you up. It would help increase your muscle strength. By the time you get to the air, you would be able to do at least a, at least one pull up. If you can already do pull ups, you would up level like crazy. Um, it's a pretty insane program. If you can hit the muscles from all sides, you can literally sculpt your body into an athlete. And that's what we're doing with this five day split because you don't want to train all of your muscles every day or even multiple times a day or whatever, you know, whatever the case is. You want to find balance and harmony with it because you do want to hit each muscle group from each side and not over tax, over um, train one part of your body. Have you ever seen those guys that have like those massive chest and then like the smaller legs, the scrawny legs? Um, yeah, yeah, they don't have balance and that's very clear to see. If you only work one area, you are creating imbalances and when you have imbalances, you're running the risk for injuries. So with Aerialist, it's almost the, yeah, it's kind of the same actually. We get these like, uh, kind of like these diamond shaped backs and broad shoulders and small waist. And it's just so important for us to be able to stay balanced as aerialists. It's just like dancers. We're all opposite. Dancers, it's their bottom half. Aerialists, it's our upper half. So how can we balance ourselves? So with that said, when working out at home, let's say you don't have an aerial rig or want to get stronger climbing, um, but you, you don't have a way to climb, you know you need to work your pulling muscles, right? So you just, you can even go to Google and say, what are the pulling muscles? But, so just like my program, which is designed for aerialist, we work the pulling muscles, but instead with an aerial apparatus, for instance, when wanting to work the latissimus dorsi, which is one of the main pulling muscles, in the aerialist ultimate shred, we would do a band workout sitting and we would do sitting rows. That would help with our pulling muscles. If you have a range of weighted bands, you can overload each set. So you don't have, so you don't need even to go to the gym. You can invest in a variety of equipment and get a program that will work. You already know the biggest reason people fail, like a fitness program or whatever, is they just don't do it or they change too many things in the program. And I, I wanna know and be honest, is that you? Have you ever 
done that. Leave me a comment and let me know if you are guilty of not completing or changing too many things on a program. I'm guilty of it as well, but I've learned to not do that. <laughs> and it's kind of nice to be able to follow a program because you can just kind of relax in your mind and just do it. And by the way, you always want to work the bigger muscle groups first so that when you go to work your smaller muscle groups, your bigger muscle groups are tired out because if you go to work your smaller muscle groups first, your bigger muscle groups will activate and try and take over. Just a little tip there. And having a pull-up bar solves so many problems. Every aerialist needs a pull-up bar at their home. And if you can't do a pull-up, here are some really easy ways that you can do it. Like I said, this program alone will help you. Okay, that would be two months of training. Leaning down, getting stronger. But I wanna know, are you someone who can't invert? Then grab a chair and put it under your pull-up bar. You can hang there as high as you can with the tippy toes on the chair. And you're gonna try and pull up as high as you can and you should be able to pull up since you're on that chair, right? So you're elevated. And then you're gonna slowly lower. These are called negatives. The one thing is that you wanna make sure that your body isn't crinkled, okay? You wanna make sure your body is at least in a hollow body diagonal in a tuck, that your pelvic is forward, that you're not in a like a sway back. Also, you can hold in a tuck in a bent arm position for as long as you can. If you cannot lift your knees up, like I said, you can keep your tippy toes on the chair and hold as high as you can. Keep your knees together and squeeze in. If you need to keep one toe on the chair, that, that's good, or you can do both. Do that until you wake those muscles up and strengthen them, and before you know it, you'll be able to tuck up. Then you can work on doing it from the ground. You can jump from the ground, but you do risk your, yourself of injury, especially it just depends on how weak the person is. So I always suggest starting on the chair. If you can invert, but you can't pull up, hold in a tuck up position in bent arms. Then add the negatives, okay? Then you would slowly lower, but you wanna try to do this in as much of a hollow body as you can do it in. Um, even if your knees are bent, you're still in that hollow body. So you can even practice this with all the grips um, and that will really help you get stronger for the regular uh, straight hollow body pull up. And when I say the other grips, I mean by like the chin up grip. Also some pull up bars have the side grip that um, is really easy to pull up that way. So you can always start with those as well and incorporate them and they'll help you with the straight body hollow body pull up. Back in the day when I was like 18, I was working at Philmont Scout Ranch and I made a pull up bar in my tent because I actually had a base tent. So it, it was a uh, like a kind of a permanent structure if you will, because I was a bear researcher. I had one of the best positions working there. I had a truck and everything, it was great. I We had full access, me and my partner had full access to the whole ranch. We had keys to the gates, it was awesome. But anyway, so I made this um, pull-up bar out of a, an old ax handle and I tied it up to the tent. And every time I would enter my tent, I would attempt to pull up. And I'm telling you, my feet, I think I started on like a tippy toe probably. But every time I would enter, I would go at least higher and higher and more and more until eventually I got to past 10 pull-ups. And that's when I didn't even know how to do straight hollow body pull-ups. When I went to circus school, that's when I learned how to do proper straight hollow body pull-ups. And it was awesome because when I came back home during a break from circus school, we did this, my family, uh, they were doing this, it was like this cancer run thing, like charity deal. And uh, there's the, the Marines were there with a booth and they had a pull-up bar. And of course my family, they really wanted me to do the pull, they were doing a pull-up challenge. 
and they wanted me to do it because they knew I could do a lot and I so I did and uh, and it was against the Marines so it was really hilarious but I totally won and all of my pull-ups were straight hollow body but at the time I was practicing um, that's when I was my major in school and everything was trapeze so I was doing a lot of trapeze work at the time and it was just great. I loved pulling up. I loved pull-ups and I still do to this day. <laughs> just a little fun story about me. But yeah, I think I won a uh, almost kind of like this thing here. In fact, it was a, it was just like this actually. It was a football. I don't know that it was a squishy football though. I don't remember. But then after I like I told y'all, I had to do the aerialist ultimate shred and I, I had to make myself do it to the T so that I could know exactly what I could promise you guys. And so I did it and literally just one day during the program, I decided to get up on my pull-up bar at the studio and I busted out six pull-ups and I couldn't believe it. And that was six pull-ups in a straight hollow body. So. I know that those pull-ups are already in my body, but I hadn't done pull-ups in years, guys, because I've gotten fat and weak, okay, from being carjacked, depressed, and lazy. Let's just face it. <laughs> but, I mean, it's just, it's just a true testament, and that's what I'm trying to tell you guys. Like, it's a true testimony of what just leaning down your fat and gaining some strength in your muscles can do. And it really just goes to show how much you can sculpt an aerial athlete's body and physique at home with very minimal budget-friendly equipment. All right, Fly Tribe, that wraps up this episode. And if you found this episode helpful, pass it along to your aerial buddy that could also use this information. Tag us on Instagram. Send us a review. DM us, guys screenshot and DM us and I will personally send you some swag for tagging us and I'm going to put you in a drawing for reviewing us to win a program from us and possibly even the AUS, the Aerials Ultimate Shred. All right, guys. So also don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so that you're the first to know when I drop a new episode. Till next time, Fly Tribe, may you create the life that you have always wanted. We'll see you then.